Christine Hernandez, Livestock Specialist for Heifer USA at Heifer Ranch in Perryville, Arkansas. Thank you so much for watching this YouTube video on how we raise our pastured poultry. We will cover topics ranging from bringing them out to pasture and then their whole life out on pasture. As you're watching this video, if you find value in it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, leave a comment below or email us at hefferusa at heifer.org. The turkey poults are now five weeks old. They have had access to their outdoor covered pen and the outdoor pasture at their brooder for two weeks now. So starting at three weeks, we started giving them access to outside. Now we know that they have been acclimated to the outdoor temperature. They have lost all of their down and now have their adult white feathers in. So they'll be better able to regulate their own body temperature outdoors. Um, something that we look for before we put them out to pasture is we look at the weather forecast. So we wanna make sure that there's not going to be a, a rainstorm coming in in the next few days or significantly low temperatures at nighttime or anything like that. So the turkeys are gonna be pretty vulnerable going from their brooder out to pasture. So we just need to make sure that we protect them and that we keep them warm and protected from the elements as much as possible. So just keep an eye on the forecast before putting them out to pasture is a good idea. So before loading up turkeys for pasture, you wanna make sure that your schooner is all ready to go. We already have the, the water bowls cleaned, turned on, make sure there's no water leaks. Our feeders are out there filled up. Once we get the turkey poults out there, we will adjust the height of both of those to make sure that they are at the proper height for these specific birds. To collect the birds and get them out to the schooner as safe and as efficiently as possible, we use these crates right behind me. These are game bird crates from 3T Products. I believe they're out of Iowa. Uh, we use these also for our chickens, so they have multi-purpose here. What I really like about these is that they are nice and small. With the turkeys, we are going to put five turkeys per crate compared to 10 chickens per crate. Uh, the turkeys are a little bit bigger than the chickens and we need to have enough space to be able to push that flap door up so that we can allow the turkeys to come out once we're at the schooner. And so as we're putting the turkeys in there, we can just use uh, our hands, put the turkeys in there and the door will close behind them, making sure that the turkeys can't get out. It's very fast and efficient. Um, I ordered some, some more of these so that we could put all chickens and all turkeys out at, at one time rather than having to do multiple loads. With the new crates that I got, I made sure to get flap doors on both ends of the crate compared to the crates I bought first, which is one flap door and one hinge door. Uh, we don't really use the hinge door at all. And when we have the ones with the hinges, we have to you know, really focus and make sure that we have the flap door on the right side and getting the birds out and things like that. Um, with two flap doors, you know, it's easy. You don't have the wrong end. You can put birds in and take birds out either end um, the same way. So I really like the, these smaller crates. They have a solid floor on the bottom so that no, no toes or fingernails will get caught um, during transport. So I, I really like these game bird crates. We will also use these bigger yellow chicken crates. A, a lot of people will put their birds out to pasture in these and that is completely fine. If you already have them on your farm, use what you have. Um, just be aware that some feet and, and toes can come out these holes on the bottom and get caught. So you just have to really listen and, uh, to the turkeys or to the chickens and, and they'll tell you if that's happening. We do use these yellow crates to make a barrier. So what we want to do is to create a smaller space and have that space filled with the turkeys. And then we can go and take our smaller crates and, and fill that with the turkeys rather than having to chase the turkeys around and catch them one at a time. We have them contained in one area. It's less stressful and it's more efficient that way. Another positive to these game bird crates is that they will stack on top of each other and lock into place. So as we're, we're driving to the pasture or something like that, 
um, they, they won't be sliding around on top of each other. They'll, they'll be stuck in place. We won't stack them this high. We'll only have about two or three crates high at a time. When we bring our turkey poults from the brooder out to pasture, we will place them in our schooner. This structure is 20 feet wide by 48 feet long. And on the inside of it, there's no crossbars going through at the level of the turkeys. That is something that I really like about this structure compared to the prairie schooner we use for our chickens. This allows the turkeys to, to walk about that the area without having any obstacles to have to go under or over. That makes moving the schooner and moving the turkeys forward a lot easier. They can immediately move to the front of the schooner and chase those, those bugs and get that fresh grass rather than having to get over those bars. This structure is more of a hoop. There is a lot less hardware that goes into it. There are five separate hoop pieces and then two ends. Uh, those ends all come in already put together, so there's very little labor involved in putting the structure together. We obtain these schooner kits from the Yoder family, who are metal fabricators out of Missouri. These kits also come with the tarp that's over top of them. They're a little bit different than, than the billboard tarps or the other tarps we use for our prairie schooners. They have uh, two hems with curtain rods that fit in there. And something very important that it took me a few months to figure out is that you want to order a tarp that is a foot or two longer than your actual structure. So the tarp on the schooner behind me is actually 50 feet long instead of 48. And that just gives you that extra overhang. Otherwise, we used to have the problem with the tarp drooping and just not being tight enough and coming off the ends. On the ends of this schooner, we put two by eight treated boards and we just hang those on with, with some wire. You can use a number of different things. Um, you can also use a number of different ends instead of just treated wood. Those boards will allow the schooner to travel over various terrain and still close that gap. We also attach some old conveyor belt to the bottom of there and that just helps keep the turkeys in when they're smaller and helps deter ground predators. There's also a number of different materials you can use. Um, in the past, we've used extra schooner tarp. We've used um, the, the baseboards from, from bathrooms and kitchens and things like that. Something that's important for your structure is to make sure that you have good solid fencing. We use PVC coated chicken wire. And then on top of that, we also add a layer of field fence. And that is just adding extra protection to, to our schooners to keep the turkey safe from predators and to keep the turkeys from getting out. Since the tarp on these schooners only go up a few feet, you only need to attach one layer of chicken wire to that first purlin. Um, so I, I believe that's about four feet high, so there's no need to buy six feet wire or anything like that. To help keep the tarp tension over top of the schooner, we just got some cheap ratchet straps from the local hardware store and we connect that to the curtain rod and then we can go around and tighten that as we need to. This is just a simple way of keeping that tarp on and a simple way of keeping it tight. We use a homemade water system for all of our poultry and with our turkey schooner, we have it across from each other in the middle of the schooner so that all the birds have access to that at all times. And then we hang our feeders on either side of those water systems. We'll attach our hanging feeders to the top purlin of our schooner. 
We use little giant game bird water bowls for our homemade water system. There's also bell waterers. You can get water nipple systems. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can water your birds. You just need to make sure that you have enough water space to water all of your turkeys at the same time. We move this schooner forward with using uh, a 3 4 inch cable and a clevis, and we just attach it to either side of the schooner. And then when we get to the end of the pasture and we're ready to turn around, we can just disconnect that and move it to the opposite end and start moving forward. To raise pastured poultry, you don't necessarily have to have a large schooner. It all depends on the size batches that you will be raising. You can simply use a chicken tractor of any different style. You can use a Joel Salatin style pen, or you can use a, a stationary pen and allow your turkeys to go out and forage. So pick a structure that works best for you and your farm and your farm terrain and whatever size batch you'll be raising. Turkeys are notorious for not being very good at going and drinking water. And so when we have our turkeys out on pasture and when they have access to go out and range and forage, I like to give them water that is outside of their schooner. I want to encourage them to be outside and grazing. And so to do that, I just give them one of these black rubber tubs. I fill it with fresh water every day, sometimes even twice a day. And to help encourage them to come and find the water and drink the water, I just purchased one of these $20 solar bird bath fountains. I got it off of Amazon. I put that fountain in the water and that creates water movement. And so that's going to make the turkeys curious to see what it is. That will encourage them to come over and start drinking the water and that will help increase their water intake. Since we will be raising three batches of turkeys this year, that has us raising them in the spring and then also in the fall. And both of those seasons, at the beginning and at the end of those, we have some cooler weather. So it's very important for us to make sure that we keep the turkeys comfortable and to do that, we add plastic fronts to the, all the schooners. So we put it on the front and on the back. This year, we are just using old greenhouse plastic from our garden. So this is all going to be repurposed. We are attaching it to the schooners with metal channeling and then with wiggle wire. So we can easily put this up and then we can easily take it down and store it so we can put it on when the next season comes along. To attach the plastic, we have channeling at the top and then channeling at the bottom. And then there's other places we need to attach it. We'll just simply use zip ties. On your farm, you can use a number of different materials. You can use tarps, you could use um, plywood or anything that you have laying around. You don't have to go out and buy something new just to, to cover the ends of the schooners. Having this plastic on the schooners will help keep the heat in the schooners at nighttime when those temperatures can get really low. It will help keep the turkeys more comfortable and help with your feed conversion, especially in the winter season. And then again, in the spring season, when we'll have those cooler temperatures and precipitation. Behind me, we have what we use as our turkey sick pen. And so those of you that have raised turkeys, you may know that they can be very aggressive towards one another. They can beat each other up. And so when we have that occur, we have this sick pen and it is actually just one of our old chicken tractors. It's made out of PVC. I believe it, it's 10 by 12. So we used to raise our, our broilers in these a, a number of years ago, but it comes in great for a, a sick pen because what we want to do is if we have turkeys that aren't feeling well, or like I said, are getting beat up and need to be taken away from the majority of the flock, we can put them into this sick pen to keep them away from getting harmed more. We'll give them fresh food and fresh water. They're still out on the grass, so they get moved every day to fresh grass. And what's really important is that we want these turkeys to still be able to, to socialize within the rest of the turkey flock. And so we move this sick pen along with our schooners. So when our big turkeys are out roaming during the day, they can uh, be fence to fence with these turkeys that are in this pen. And so we're not taking them far away, isolating them at all. We want them to still be a part of the group just so that they are not in direct contact with the rest of the flock.
When we first move our turkey poults out to pasture, when we are doing morning chores, that will consist of bringing out our tractor and moving the schooner forward one full space. So we wanna give those turkeys fresh grass. We wanna get them off of their manure from yesterday. We wanna use them as a management tool to help build our soil, to leave nutrients behind where they've been. After we move the schooner forward, it is important that we walk around the whole schooner. We look for any way that the turkey can get out or any way that a predator can get in. So that's gonna be along the sides and along the front and the back. If we have spaces or gaps, we will fill those either with a tarp or shavings bags that we use in our brooder or anything that we can get our hands on to help plug that hole. We will bring out five gallon buckets full of their feed ration. We'll go through, fill up all of their hanging feeders, make sure that they are adjusted to the proper height, which will be at the turkey shoulders, so where their neck and their back meet together. We will dump out their water bowls. We'll take a brush and clean out any leftover residue. We'll also adjust those water bowls to make sure they are at the proper height for those turkeys which is also at their shoulder. You wanna make sure that's at the shoulder of the average turkey. So you're gonna have turkeys that may be bigger and maybe smaller. So you just need to think about that as you're adjusting the heights of both of those systems. In addition to having hanging feeders for their feed, we have two hanging feeders per schooner for their grit. Those are the metal galvanized feeders that we have in their schooner. You don't have to use a hanging feeder for the grit. You can simply put it in a five gallon bucket or any other container as long as they have access to that. Since we're raising turkeys through nine months of the year, there may be some days where we have to put their schooner tarp sides down if it's raining or if it's really cold. So it's important that we pay attention to the weather to make sure that the turkeys stay as comfortable as possible. In the cooler or the wet months, we will also add additional hay into their schooner so they can bed down and keep themselves warm. In the warmer months, when the sun is very hot on our schooners, we put in aluminum coated bubble insulation and we just attach that to the inside of the schooner right underneath the tarp. So that will help reflect the sunlight and help keep the inside of the schooner a little bit cooler and keep the birds more comfortable. As the turkeys reach the age, where they are ready to go out in day range at that six to eight week mark, we will begin to move their schooners in the evening time. And that allows them to have a fresh place to lay down and to bed down. That helps encourage them to come back into the schooner because they think that they're getting access to fresh grass. Because that's what they were used to when we would move them in the mornings. We're getting access to that fresh grass. For morning chores, once the turkeys are able to day range, we come out here, we'll still feed them, we will still clean their waterers, but we don't move that schooner. We simply open up their doors and we either have a ramp that they can go up that ramp and to get out of their schooner and outside to their range, or we have a turkey door that we have fabricated on either end of the schooner. So that makes it easy for the turkeys to just simply walk outside of the schooner. They don't have any obstacle like that ramp to go up and to go back down. For evening chores, turkeys are very easy to control and to herd back into the schooner. So we can either have them go back up that ramp into their schooner or herd them through their turkey door. We will close all the turkeys back into their schooner before we move it forward because we don't want any turkeys to be in front of that schooner and maybe to accidentally harm them or run them over or anything like that. Part of morning chores when the turkeys have access to the range is going to be cleaning out that black Rubbermaid water basin, giving them fresh water, making sure that that solar fountain is working if it's a nice sunny day, and then also putting out full five gallon buckets of feed. So I want to encourage the turkeys to go outside to forage. I don't want them to have to go back inside that schooner to get food to eat or to get water to drink. I want to give them access to that outside so they can be outside as long as possible. Once these turkeys reach their eight week mark, they are very hardy birds. Uh, they're pretty much bulletproof at that point. 
it's getting them from day one to that eight weeks that can be kind of troublesome. We will raise them until they are 16 weeks old. That's when we'll send them to processing. We want them to weigh about 18 pounds so that we'll get a, around a 14 pound carcass. Once our turkeys become too big to put them in a five gallon bucket, we move to using just an ordinary digital bathroom scale. I place it on a piece of plywood so that it has a flat surface. And then I will catch turkeys and, and hold them on the scale with myself. And then just a little bit of simple math, subtracting my weight, we will be able to get um, an estimate of how much the turkeys weigh. The best way to hold onto a turkey once they're very large like this is to grab the base of their wings where their wings meet their back and then there's a, a nice solid big area that you can hold on to their wings and you want to hold them close to your body because they may try to flap away and you want to hold their feet uh, away from you as well so they don't try to scratch you. That was a 22 pound turkey and so we are going to catch a few more so that we can get a good average uh, we're going to look for the biggest turkeys and the smallest turkeys so that we can develop the average of what our turkey flock weighs. We keep track of records for morning and afternoon chores. Those records include the number of buckets that we fed them, any mortalities or any calls that we had to perform. If we notice any birds getting picked on or having a sickness, we will go ahead and take those birds out of the flock and we'll put them in our sick pen. We will have that sick pen still close and still integrated with our turkey flock. It will just allow those turkeys to have protection from the rest of the flock as they are healing. We order turkey hens rather than turkey toms, and that's because we want them to finish at that 18 to 20 pound range. The turkey toms will get bigger than that, and I've also found that the turkey toms can be more aggressive than the hens, even though it is the fact that all turkeys can be aggressive to one another. For pastured poultry, we want to make sure that they have access to fresh grass, sunshine, fresh air, and they get exercise. We allow them to day range. So a part of chores is we set up a poultry netting big enough to allow all the turkeys to go out and day range. We use poultry netting from Premier One Fencing. The poultry netting that we use is 48 inches tall. They also have one that's 42 inches tall. The purpose of this netting is to allow the turkeys to, to go out and forage to get more area to exercise, but to also keep them more contained within a space so that it's easier for us to put them back in at nighttime. That netting also helps prevent um, ground predators. It will not prevent any aerial predators. We like to start giving the turkeys access to the netting anywhere between six to eight weeks old. If you are at the six week mark, you need to make sure that they're not too small to actually go through the squares of the netting. If you wait longer than eight weeks, sometimes the turkeys are, are too big and they just don't respect that, that perimeter and they will literally walk right over top of that poultry netting. So getting them used to that poultry netting between six to eight weeks is a good window. The poultry netting can be electrified. It's the vertical wire that has the metal filament going through there. So that's the one that carries the voltage. The horizontal ones and the one on the very bottom does not carry any voltage. Uh, you can use a plug-in charger. You can use a solar charger. You can use a charger that's connected to a car battery. Um, anything that, that you use to electrify other fences on your farm will work just fine. When the turkeys are first getting introduced to the electric fence, we will put a charger on there so that it carries a voltage. Once they get a little bit bigger, we tend to not keep that charger on there. We'll use our solar chargers elsewhere because we use them for all of our animal species here. Uh, once the turkeys understand what that fence is, that that fence is their barrier, that that's supposed to keep them in, um, they usually don't mess with that fence at all. If your fence isn't set up properly or, or tight enough, or if there's something on the other side of the fence that the turkeys really want and they're big enough, they can walk right over top of that fence whether there's a charge on it or not. The turkeys are not as affected by that voltage going through the fence as other animal species are.
Turkeys are very big foragers. They like to go out and eat grass and seeds and the different bugs that they'll find. They can consume up to 40% of their diet just from the, the greens and, and the fresh around them. We use this netting for our turkeys specifically. We don't day range any of our chickens. The poultry netting that we use from Premier One, we get the 160 foot length. We will use three rolls of that netting when we graze our batch of 500 turkeys. I prefer the netting that only has the one spike compared to the two spikes. Um, some of our ground is, is rocky and can be hard. And so trying to put two spikes into the ground is even more difficult than just trying to, to do the one spike. So I personally prefer the one spike netting. These rolls of 160 foot at the 48 inches tall are about 24 pounds. So it, it could be a little bit heavier. If you go with a 42 inch one, I think those are only about 23 pounds. So just slightly lighter. You can use that 42 inch one because when using the broad breasted white turkeys that we're raising, they are too heavy to fly. So we don't need to worry about them trying to fly over top of that fence. If you're going to be raising other turkeys or heritage turkeys, those ones can fly. So you may just need to um, clip their wings or use a different way of day ranging them. When setting up the poultry netting, there is definitely a skill to it and an art to it. And that is going to take time to perfect. I still don't have all of that under control. And so you do want to make sure that you have a nice tight fence. Um, we don't really care about if it's straight or if it looks really pretty as long as it keeps our turkeys into their day ranging area, that's perfectly fine for us. When we are setting up a new day range area for the turkeys, the way we like to do that is to connect the netting to the corners of our schooners. And we can do that since we don't put voltage through the netting after the turkeys are used to it. If we are trying to put some voltage through there, then we'll just put a T-post in the ground and use some string or some rope and tie it to that T-post so that it has a nice sturdy end that can help keep it tight. So starting our range area with the majority of the schooner outside and just one end of the schooner having access to that range area. For the next move, we will move that schooner into that range area, one full move, and then we'll close that fence behind there. We will progress the turkey schooner through their range area until we get to the other side. And we'll continue that schooner through the other side until that back of the schooner is the only thing that has access to the turkey range. We can set up a big enough area. We can get both schooners through there and only have to reset up our fence twice a week. So we can get anywhere from three to four full schooner moves through our day range area. When it's time for us to set up a whole new area, the way we do that is we disconnect all the poultry netting. We'll pull each spike out of the ground and lay it flat. We will come back and pick up one post at a time and we will layer them on top of each other, sort of like a book. And we want all of the spikes at one end. Once you have collected that whole fence, you can just simply lift it up and carry it to where you wanna start your fence again. You drop that first post at your schooner and you can walk backwards. And as the slack is coming out of your fence, you can just keep dropping one post right after the other. And you can walk out that 164 feet in just a few minutes. We'll go back and with that first post, we will connect it to either the schooner or to a T-post for stability. And then we'll just keep walking, pulling out that tension and putting one spike in the ground at a time. When we're giving our turkeys day range space, I like to make sure they have access to at least one or two big shade trees. So that way, especially in the summertime, they have access to shade. They really like um, dust bathing and things like that underneath the trees. If you don't have access to shade trees, that's okay. The turkeys will still really enjoy having the access to forage outside. Since we're using three different sections of netting, we can manipulate where we're putting that fencing to include or not include certain areas. And if the ends don't meet up perfectly, we can just go pick up a few posts and just move them in or out to wherever we need them to be. The turkeys are at their 16 week mark. 
So that is the age that we want to process them. We are aiming for about an 18 to 20 pound live weight. And then that will translate to about a 14, 15 pound carcass. Uh, so the turkeys are getting ready to get loaded up onto a trailer and go to processing. And so to get ready for that, we will take their feet away about 12 to 14 hours before processing. But we also need to keep in mind that we need to take the feed away far enough in advance so that the turkeys will only have access to water for about four hours before either they go to sleep for the night or before they get loaded onto the trailer. And in the morning, we also limit the amount of feed that we're going to give them. We want them to have access to all the food that they want to consume, but we don't want to have leftover or excess feed in their feeders when we need to take them away. So that's just something to think about the day they're going to processing. So once the, the feeders are out, we'll also move the schooners to the best place possible so that when the trailer gets here, they can just back right up nice and easy for whoever's hauling your birds. We have the inside of our schooners set up so that we can load them onto the trailer the least stressful way possible. So inside we are using a ramp and this ramp we've actually made for our pigs to get onto a trailer, so it's multi-purpose. We have outdoor carpet nailed onto there, and then on top of the outdoor carpet, we have some wood cleat, and so that helps the, the ramp from getting slippery, so that the animals always have some sort of traction while they're going up the ramp. And then that also helps the turkeys get to the height of the trailer, so they don't have to try to, to jump in there. We're not forcing them to, to really get in there. They're walking up there and it's, it's not stressful whatsoever. We have old bed frames that we've made a little alley next to the ramp so that the turkeys, once they're on the ramp, they'll just go forward. They can't get off the ramp. And then at the base of the ramp, we have two of the bed frames fanning out a little bit to make it more of a funnel. And when the trailer gets here, the trailer will back up to the door of the schooner. We'll have one person on the trailer that is helping facilitate the turkeys to finish getting on the trailer and to go forward. And that person is also counting the number of turkeys because our trailer is going to have three different compartments. So we need to know how many turkeys are in each compartment to make sure that we're following the amount of space per bird for transport. And so the other people will be in the schooner with some blind boards that we also use for our pigs and just helping uh, push and, and herd those turkeys forward up towards the ramp. And we are doing this about an hour before sunset. We want the turkeys to be leaving our farm as the sun is going down, because that is their natural bedtime. Thank you so much for watching our YouTube video. I hope you're able to learn something or take something away from this. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, leave a comment below or email us at heiferusa at heifer.org.